President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to attend the Arab African and Saudi African summit in Riyadh. Dangote hand over infrastructure to some students in Lagos as part of its educational support program. Australian Prime Minister and Chinese counterpart to meet for a drought-breaking bilateral meeting in BG. This is MLC TV Global News reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, the Confluence State of Nigeria. I am Jennifer Odimayo. Thanks for joining us. President Bola Tinubu will attend the Arab African and Saudi African Summit in Riyadh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, 10th to 11th November. Ajuri Ungelale, special advisor to the president on media and publicity, disclosed this on Sunday while briefing state house correspondents in Abuja. He said the attendance of the president was predicated on the administration's drive to use all avenues to attract foreign direct investment into the various sectors of the economy. He added that the president would be aggressive, like in all of his other engagements in attracting genuine foreign investment in different sectors of the economy. Ingelale said the president would be accompanied to the summit by cabinet members, the business community, as well as other relevant government functionaries. He said a detailed briefing would be made in the course of the various meetings by the president with investors. The Arab-African Summit is aimed at establishing practical solutions for developing Arab-African cooperation and catching up with the emerging and influential international powers in Africa. The governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sawunlu, on Sunday said the Oyibo overpass was strategic as it would ease traffic in the state, especially around the Oyibo Yaba Adekunle area. Sawunlu, who spoke at the unveiling of the Oyibo overpass, one of the five overpasses being constructed across rail lines in the state also noted that the inauguration of the bridge was timely as the federal government was set to commence the rehabilitation of the third mainland bridge on Monday. The government said the, the Oyibo overpass would serve as an alternative route for commuters traveling between the island and the mainland during the period of rehabilitation, hence providing succor for commuters. The special guest of honor at the inauguration ceremony and Ikiti State Governor Abiodun Oyebanji congratulated Sawunlu, who he called their mentor, on his various successes in the state. Earlier, the managing director, chief executive officer Abimbola Akinajo, who noted that the bridges are an essential part of the Lagos Rail Mass Transit Red Line Rail project to ensure the safety of Lagosians disclosed that the LRMT Red Line Oyibo overpass has a total length of 717 meters. Ahead of the November 11, 2023 governorship election in Imo State, the Inspector General of Police, Olukayode Egbetokun, has ordered the immediate redeployment of the State Commissioner of Police, Mohamed Bade, to the first headquarters in Abuja. According to a statement by the first public relations officer, Olumuyua at Dejobi on Sunday, the IG's decision to redeploy the CP underscores the police guard's dedication to upholding the rule of law and maintaining strict neutrality throughout the electoral proceedings. Adejobi said, this redeployment is not an indictment on the affected officer, but is rather part of a broader strategy aimed at bolstering security measures, promoting transparency and upholding the integrity of the electoral security management. Ajero was attacked and brutalized in Oweri on Wednesday while he mobilized workers for a protest over their unpaid salaries. Amidst the widespread outrage that followed the incident, the NLC and the TUC had accused the Imo CP of being complicit in attack and threatened a five-day ultimatum for the federal government to replace him. As part of his educational support program under its corporate social responsibility, Dangote's cement PLC at the weekend handed over infrastructure to some schools in Lagos Island area of Lagos State. The project, expected to benefit over 2,500 people, included a 5 kVA solar power source to power the ICT centers at Kuramo Junior College, Victoria Island, Victoria Island Senior Secondary School, Victoria Island, and Girls Secondary School of Balende, Lagos. According to a statement on Sunday, the firm also rehabilitated and equipped the school library of Girls Junior Secondary School of Balende with furniture. Also renovated and equipped with furniture and bookshelves 
was the staff room of Kuramo Senior College, Victoria Island. Speaking at the unveiling of the project, Group Managing Director Dangote Cement, Avin Patak, said the project were part of the company's social investment program designed to contribute to societal well-being in the areas of education, health, economic and infrastructural development. Patak, who was represented by Pan-African Regional Chief Financial Officer, my recall said the interventions were targeted at some selected projects, especially schools within the neighborhood of the Dangote Cement PLC head office, Ikoi, Lagos. And on politics, ahead of the November 11 governorship election in Kogi State, members of the Fulani community in the state have endorsed the candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Usman Udidu. The spokesperson for the Fulani community, Professor Muhammad Abdullahi, who spoke on behalf of the community, said they had judged Ododo as the most qualified candidate in the race. He said they know Ododo is the most qualified candidate among all candidates contesting the governorship seat. Ododo, in his response, urged the people to vote for him. He said his intentions for the state are pure and good. If elected, he will ensure that the Fulanis are free to continue to transact their businesses and their children will continue to go to school without intimidation. He also assured them that if elected as the governor of the state, he will also appoint Fulani indigents into his cabinet. We go on a short break now. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Engineer A.S. Yunusa. I'm the general manager of McDream Concepts uh, Limited. I enjoin you to keep watching Opinion on Malakai TV. It's enlightening, educating, and entertaining. You will never regret to join the TV. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Welcome back. And on crime, over 14 million pills of tramadol and bottles of codeine syrup worth over 13 billion naira in the street value have been recovered by operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, in Lagos. The recovery was made in three major busts of drug cartel operating in Amuwa Dauphin, Idumota, and Sako shed of the Mutala Mohammed International Airport, Ikeja, Lagos State. The agency spokesman, Femi Baba Femi, confirmed that the three intelligence led operations began with the raid of House No. 8 and 10, Honorable Wahuha Avenue, Divine Estate, Ago Palace, area of Amuwa Dauphin we have 490,000 pills of tramadol and over 81,000 bottles of codeine syrup measuring over 4,000 milligrams we are recovered. In a similar operation on Tuesday, 31st October, Bafemi said the NDLE operative swooped on a secret warehouse operated by a billionaire Idumota trader in Woha and Nayo located at Unitire, a Guda area of Surilere. We had 12,700,000 pills of tramadol we are recovered. The spokesman also said at least six members of a syndicate using their official cover to, op to facilitate the smuggling of illicit drugs through the Skyway Aviation Heading Company. Sako Warehouse at the Lagos Airport into the country have been arrested and 1,210,000 pills of tramadol seized from them in a painstaking operation that lasted for two weeks. The six suspects already in NDLEA custody include Oladele Sanya Olu, Lawal Itunu Temitope, Sadamo Alan Daniel, Ude Felix Monde, Musa Mutalib and Unegbe Evans Isibo, while three other suspects, Saki Mubarak Salami, Abdullahi Aliu aka Aboki and Monde Anwal are now on the run and wanted by NDLEA. Meanwhile, NDLEA operatives have arrested three blind men operating an illicit drug ring between Lagos and Kanu, while another blind member of the syndicate is at large. The lead was blown off the group following the arrest of a blind suspect, Adamu Hassan, 40, along Gwagwalada Expressway, Abuja, with 12 kgs of skunk on his way from Lagos to Kanu on 28 October. Investigation, however, established that he was totally oblivious of the contents of the bag handed to him to deliver in Kano. Follow-up operations on them led to the arrest of the arrowhead of the syndicate, Belu Abubakar 45, who is also blind. On the foreign scene, Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese and Chinese President Xi Jinping will soon sit down for a drought-breaking bilateral meeting in Beijing. Albanese, who landed in Shanghai on Saturday, is the first Australian leader to visit China since 2016. 
The visit is seen as a low key moment in toying relations after a string of trade and security disputes. Trade will top the agenda. Albanese is calling for the removal of Chinese tariffs on Australian goods. Zing is expected to ask for more access to key Australian sectors. Albanese told reporters in Beijing on Monday ahead of the meeting that they need to cooperate with China where they can, disagree where they must, and engage in their national interest. His trip follows a diplomatic deep freeze prompted by, among other things, Australia's call for an investigation into the origins of COVID-19 and economic sanctions enacted by BG on key Australian exports such as beef, wine and ballet. But a list of sticking points and security concerns will hang over Monday's talks. Israel gives condition for ceasefire. Death hits 11,000. The U.S. Secretary of State has arrived in Turkey as he continues his diplomatic tour of the region and pushes for a pause in the fighting. Speaking earlier in Baghdad, Antony Blinken said regional leaders would welcome a humanitarian pause in Gaza. The White House has said Vice President Kamala Harris will discuss the conflict with unnamed foreign leaders on Monday. It says Harris will advance U.S. efforts to increase the flow of aid to civilians in Gaza. Meanwhile, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Sunday gave a condition for a ceasefire. Israel won't agree to any ceasefire activity in the Gaza war without the return of the hostages, Netanyahu said during a visit to the Raman Air Force Base in southern Israel, as he explained that he was delivering this message both to the country's allies and enemies. Also, Pope Francis said on Sunday that he begs in God's name for a ceasefire in the Israeli-Hamas war. The health minister in the Hamas-run Gaza Strip said Sunday that at least 907, at least 9,770 people had been killed in the Palestinian territory since the war with Israel erupted last month. The ministry said at least 404,800 children were among those killed since Israel began striking the Gaza Strip. The latest information brings the death toll on both sides to over 11,000. Uganda's president, Yoweri Museveni, has downplayed concerns over the expulsion of his country from a special U.S.-African trade program. Last week, U.S. President Joe Biden said Uganda and three other African countries would be removed from the African Growth and Opportunity Act, citing Uganda's gross violations of internationally recognized human rights. But President Museveni on Sunday criticized the U.S., saying they overestimated themselves and erroneously think that African countries cannot move forward without their support. The U.S. is the latest to take action against Uganda, which in May passed a controversial anti-homosexuality law that includes a death penalty for certain same-sex acts. The law prompted the World Bank to withdraw Uganda's funding, but President Museveni doubled down, accusing the organization of coercing his country to reverse the law. He stated that Uganda could still develop without the bank's support. Museveni, however, hailed the American government for maintaining funding for HIV drugs, but added that his government had a contingency plan to acquire the drug if foreign donors hold out. Joy Dada has the latest in the world of entertainment. Welcome to Entertainment World. I am Joy Dada. Nigerian singer Divine Ikobo, popularly known as Rema, won the Maiden Best Afrobeat Award at this year's MTV Europe Music Awards. Records that the organizers introduced a new category called Best Afrobeats into the 2023 event. The pioneer nominees were French superstar Aya Nakamura and Nigerian singers Ashake, Ira Star, Bonaboy, Davido, and Rema. Despite the award ceremony being cancelled, I mean the Israel Hamas were the organizers still announced the winners. Rema was adjoined the Best Afrobeat winner while Tanzania Diamond Platinum won the Best African Art category. However, Rema and Selena Gomes came down lost the Best Collaboration category to John Cook and Lotus Seven. Grammy-winning Nigeria singer Bonaboy lost three awards, including Best Afrobeat, Best African Art, and Best Live Performer. This came barely two weeks after he lost all seven nominations at the 2023 Best Hip Hop Awards. See on Entertainment, Canadian star singer Drake and his American counterpart Jennifer Lopez has joined several other artists calling for a pause in the ongoing Israel Hamas war. 
According to Billboard, the entertainment celebrities has added their voices to the growing list of artists who have signed an open letter calling on Congress and President Joe Biden to back a cessation of hostilities in the Israel-Hamas conflict. Where the conflict is escalating and nearing a month, various organizations including the UN, UNICEF, WHO and Amnesty International, among many others, have urged for a ceasefire in order to save lives. It was in solidarity that these popular artists from Hollywood, including Drake, Jennifer Lopez, Adam Lambert, and others have come forward in support of the ceasefire. The letter they signed out Congress and Biden to support a ceasefire in the war between Israel and Hamas. The letter of artists for ceasefire was sent to the U.S. president, urging them to get both Israel and Hamas to agree to the cessation of fighting in the three weeks war. Regardless of religion or ethnicity, the actors said they regard all life as sacred and reject the killing of Israelite and Palestinian civilians. They said the reason was to stand for freedom and peace for the people across the globe. Thanks for joining me. I am Joy that I reported for MLC TV. Thank you, Joy. And that is the size of our package. Kindly support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Malakai TV. Like and follow our Facebook pages, MLC TV, MLC TV 2, MLC TV Yoruba and Igbira Babe, MLC TV. Instagram, MLC TV 2021X, Malakai TV, and TikTok, Malakai underscore TV. For your event coverage, appearance on any of our programs, contributions, comments, advert placement, or sponsorship, please call or send SMS to any of our numbers displayed on your screen. Join Malakai TV online on weekends to watch our various programs, Saturday 7 p.m. Political Arena, Sunday 6 p.m. Women's World, and Monday 9 a.m. The Opinion. It is Malakai TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Please be your brother's keeper to build a happier and better society together. I am Jennifer Odimayo. Do have a nice day.